Hi, I'm John the Engineer Termel, and this is a picture of me at a debate hosted by Rogers Television in the Brantford, Ontario general election last 2007. And I held up my Let's sticker, which I've used in all my elections and previous elections, and the moderator, Tim Philp, had the police remove me and take me away, and I filed a letter of complaint to the CRTC. I said that I should not have been excluded from equitable treatment because I chose to wear my party sticker. So I have my case tomorrow coming up in the Federal Court of Appeal in Toronto before three judges on my complaint that I was denied a fair share of time on a lousy excuse, which was that he had banned the use of party buttons. What right did he have to say what my appearance or my presentation would be? So now I'm going to read you my affidavit and the memorandum of argument that's going to be heard tomorrow. And probably I'll do an addendum to this video uh, after. Affidavit of John C. Termel, October 4, 2007, application pursuant to Article 28. I, John C. Termel of the City of Brantford, make oath and say as follow. One, I was an independent candidate in the 2003 Ontario general election in Brant Riding. Having participated in a quarter century's worth of debates by that time, I'm the only candidate who uses visual aids such as newspaper clippings, complimentary currencies such as Toronto dollars, Guelph green dollars, maritime hours, computer diskette, rubber ruler. Like most candidates, I wear my abolitionist party button, which is a lapel sticker saying let's for the green currency local employment trading software. I have a royal flush on my tie and wear a white hard hat saying the engineer to open and close my presentations. Rogers debate moderator Tim Philp didn't like me using visual aids when the other candidates had none. And so in 2004 general election debate, he unilaterally banned visual aids and party or personal identification. Of course, other than party buttons, this ban on visual aids did not affect the presentation of the others, only mine. Three. Exhibit A is the July 21st, 2004 letter from the CRTC citing my complaint, number 193800, about Rogers interfering with my presentation in which I wrote, I've been participating in partisan political broadcasts hosted by Rogers Cable from the start, but on June 16, 2003, Rogers Cable taped the partisan political debate for future broadcast by candidates in the Brandt riding in which certain protocols for partisan political broadcasts were unilaterally changed. Candidates were informed that no political affiliation would be permitted to be shown on the debate. I've always been permitted to wear my party affiliation button before and protest the change in Rogers' policy. Partisan political affiliation is present on the Elections Canada ballot and has always been present on partisan political broadcast before. I do not understand Rogers Cable's new policy of banning the display of partisan political affiliation, which used to be permitted. I make this protest now before the policy spreads. This decision affects the candidate rights nationally and should never have been unilaterally altered by your local producers. 4. Exhibit B is the August 11th letter from the CRTC informing Rogers of my complaint but doing nothing more about it. Exhibit 3 is the August 12, 2004 letter to the CRTC noting, Have you asked for an explanation for the change in Rogers' TV policy? on party affiliation identification? Or does this mean that they do not have to explain why they've banned party affiliation buttons? Please inform me if bringing my unhappiness with the change in policy to their attention is all you intend to do so that we may proceed right to the federal court judicial review. Exhibit C, uh, D is the October 28th letter to the CRTC, quote, I'm still waiting a decision on how you are going to deal with my protest against your licensee violating my candidate right to partisan political affiliation in election debates. The CRTC did not respond. Eight, at this 2007 Ontario general election debate for Brandt riding, which will be rebroadcast on September 29, October 6, and October 8, I displayed my party button and was cut off by moderator Tim Philp, who insisted I put it down. I put it on my lapel, and when he wouldn't let me continue my statement unless I took it off, I obeyed and removed it. And then Philp ordered the Brantford police to eject me anyway. Nine. 
Exhibit E is my September 24th complaint to the CRTC demanding they guarantee all candidates equitable time, quantitatively and qualitatively. Exhibit F is the September 25th CRTC letter giving Rogers three weeks after the election date to respond. Good use your government commissions are, eh? Exhibit G is the September 27th Rogers response refusing me an equitable share of time. In it, Rogers says I was not ejected by police for wearing my party button, but for interrupting the next speaker. Now, since I could not have been interrupting the next candidate while I was still making my one-minute opening statement, Exhibit H is my October 1st letter to the CRTC demanding action to ensure equitable time before the inequitable program was rebroadcast three more times. Believing that interrupting another candidate is not sufficient cause for not following the equitable time requirements of the CRTC, even if it was true, and that the moderator had no right to interrupt my equitable time due to the display of a party symbol, this affidavit is made in support of a motion for an interim order of mandamus. Well, now that's off, not interim order, but an order declaring that the format of the allocation of the free time partisan political broadcast was inequitable. <clears throat> John Term Mel, sworn October 4th, 2007. Memorandum of argument. Rogers Cablevision and Branford violated the equitableness requirements of the CRTC in refusing to provide an equitable share of the free time political broadcast to a candidate for having exhibited a party logo. Statement of facts. Applicant was an independent candidate in the 2003 Ontario general election in Brant Riding. Having participated in a quarter century's worth of debates, applicant was the only candidate who used visual aids. And, of course, Phil didn't let me do it no more. On July 24th, I complained. I've already read the information, luckily, earlier. And so the three extra broadcasts did take place. So I only got one minute in each of them, and that was me being thrown off by the police. So, point of objection. The CRTC's equitableness requirements do not make allowance for denying candidates access for wearing a party button. Argument. Since it seemed pretty clear I could not have been interrupting the next candidate during my one-minute opening statement, this is a mere false pretext for denying equitable time for wearing the party button. Regardless, interrupting another candidate is not sufficient cause for not following the equitable time requirements of the CRTC, even if it was true, which it could not have been. So, the moderator had no right to interrupt my equitable share of the free time political broadcast for the mere display of a party decal. Order sought. I seek an order declaring that wearing a party button is insufficient reason to refuse to conform to the CRTC's requirements by Rogers Television. Tomorrow morning, afternoon, we may get an answer. That's the case. Okay, back from the Federal Court of Appeal in Toronto, December 15th, 2008. This is the case of the band button. And the judges were Justices Le Tourneau, Noel, and Blais. So I made my point about the fact that I was banned for my appearance because throughout all these elections, I've always started with my hat, my disquette, and my royal flush tie which I explained to the judges, and then in two th and my exhibits, you know, and in 2004, after I'd been like this, Tim Philp decided he was going to ban all my exhibits and ban my hat, had cops there to make sure I didn't wear it, so I couldn't do that, and when I complained, couldn't wear my button, when I complained to the CRTC in 2004, they did nothing. And I explained that to the judges. They did nothing. Then in 2007, again, they screw up. And they, uh, Tim Phillips now has me ejected because I showed my button. So anyway, the Crown argued that I didn't use the proper procedure. I should have waited after until my complaint was resolved three weeks after the complaint had been made and the election would be over. In other words, I should have waited until there was no more use. I wouldn't get anything anyway. And then that would be the proper way to do it. And I told the judges, hey, the only way to try and get justice at the time was by doing this. So that was my answer. Uh, I pointed out that the CRTC also has to supervise. And they basically said that, look, they can't do anything until the election is over. And I said, well, how can you call that supervision if you can only deal with stuff after the fact? So they're not doing their jobs. And then he said that, look, there was a Vezina decision that said because all parties participate in debates, that means that debates aren't partisan political broadcasts. 
Well, I said, whoa, whoa, when you exclude one or more parties from the debate, well, now it is a partisan political broadcast for the guys who are left, who get the partisan advantage, right? So I said, when I'm ejected, that means it's partisan now. And finally, they said that the election debates are not subject to the equitable requirements because of my own cases against the CRTC in the early 1980s, where the first judge said that equitable does not necessarily mean equal, and they later concluded that equitable does not mean equal, and the media now have to decide who they're going to cheat. So anyway... They decided to reserve their decision, and we're going to wait and see what happens. So that's what happened with the case of the banned uh, button at the Federal Court of Appeal. And as I went out the door, I said to the two boys on the other side, see in the Supreme Court of Canada, next stop.